Okay, the Lord told me to make a video on Hebrews chapter um, 6, where it talks about falling away. Okay, but, um, you know, when you look at people out there on YouTube, you see, you hear their teaching, and their teaching is a reflection of their actual relationship with God. For example, if somebody teaches that God does not speak today, what's that tell you about that person and their walk with God? It tells you they don't have an ear to hear. They not only don't have an ear to hear, if God did speak to them, they'd rebuke that voice and say, you're not God. Yet they do teach that the devil speaks, so they give more power to the devil. And so how do you think that person actually lives? So the way people teach is a reflection of their uh, of their walk with God. You got other people who teach that um, faith plus nothing. Well, that might be their walk with God. But if you give God nothing, if you do nothing for God, then you're going to get nothing because you reap what you sow. Okay. But uh, he, he told me... Now, I already made a video on this and I, I never posted it on YouTube and then I deleted it from my phone. And here's why. When I did that first teaching, I didn't include this verse. Hebrews chapter 5. The Son, though He was... Son, okay, verse uh, Hebrews 5, verse 8. Son, though He was, He learned obedience from what He suffered... And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Okay, so it's talking about Jesus. And it's talking about um, how he learned obedience by suffering. Okay. And that he became a source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Now, first of all, I don't know how you can obey God if he doesn't speak today. If God does not speak, how do you obey God? That's why these people, you got to take everything they teach and throw it all out. A lot of them teach that it's a pre-tribulation rapture, which is clearly a false teaching. You have to manipulate so many verses of Scripture to teach a pre-tribulation rapture. Yet, all the people who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture... Many of them are, are the very people who are going to fall away when persecution and hardship comes. And look what it says, that Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered. And then he became a source of salvation, eternal salvation, for all who obey him. Okay, so that eliminates... Guys like Greg Jackson and Chelsea Bedell who talk about how obedience is nothing but works of the flesh. And then they're going to tell you that, well, obeying him is just to believe. Uh, and then you try to, no, you have to have an ear to hear. And you have to, like, the Lord never spoke to Peter and told Peter to break your alabaster bottle. No, he spoke to the lady who had an alabaster bottle and told her. By the Holy Spirit, she heard from the Father. Yet Peter walked away from his fishing business in order to become a fisher of men. There's obedience there if you look at it. Okay, so down to uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance, of acts that lead to death and faith in God, instructions on cleansing and the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. For it is impossible, um, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have share, shared in Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age. And who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss they are crucifying the son of God all over again. And subjecting him to public disgrace. The land that drinks in rain often falling on it. That produces a crop useful to those who, for whom it is farmed receives the blessing of God. But the land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and in danger of being cursed. And in the end, it will be burned. 
It will be burned in the end. He's talking about those who fall away from the faith. In other words, you come to know the Lord. You get touched by the Holy Spirit. And then you eventually you turn away from the truth. Just like what's written in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 too. It says, by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word that was preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. What does it mean to be, believe in vain? It means you didn't hold firmly to the word that was preached. Then he goes on to say, Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. And that, um, and that God is not unjust that he will forget your work and the love you have shown him. Okay, and in, in other words, the labor of love. And look what it says. He is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. In other words, God's talking about doing works for the Lord. There's a parable of the lazy servant where Jesus says, you wicked and lazy servant. He says, tie him hand and foot and throw him out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, there is a place to do work for the Lord. Some people say the work of the Lord is just to believe in Him. If you believe in something, it's always going to cause you to reflect that belief in your actions. For example, let's say your house is burning down and you don't believe it. You're going to sit there watching TV, changing, flipping the channels until you start to smell the smoke and realize it is burning down. Then when you believe it, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to jump up, you're going to grab the phone, you're going to call 911, you're going to make sure the pets are all out of the house, you're going to make sure no kids are inside, you're going to go through the whatever rooms are not burning and make sure the baby's not in the crib and get the baby. And you're going to do all these actions if you really believe. But people who teach that believing God means no action, no movement, that you just you just you're trusting in God's and everything Jesus did, that's not faith. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter um so one it is possible to fall away from the Lord once and and believing in vain, but look at what faith really is. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 33, it's talking about people who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised. If you never gain what was promised, you don't have real faith. And I'm talking about eternity, eternity in the Lord. You have to gain what it, it says. They shut the mouths of the lions. They quenched the fury of the flames. They escaped the edge of the sword whose darkness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received their dead back, raised to life again. If you've had someone who died and weren't, weren't raised from the dead, that means you didn't have faith to believe that person could be raised from the dead. It's that simple. There were others who were tortured and refused to be released so that they might attain to an even better resurrection. What's that mean? It's the same as laying up treasures in heaven. Why would the lady break her alabaster bottle, something worth in today's wages $52,000, a whole year of $1,000 a week? It says the alabaster bottle was worth a, hundred, uh, a year's wages. Well, for one person, a year's wages, the average year annual wage is 51000 a year, something like that. But for some people, if you're a doctor and you make a million a year, for some people, if you work, um, you know, as a nurse, you make 90000 a year. Whatever that number is, that's the value of the alabaster bottle. A year's wages. Um, so these people were stoned. They were sawed in two. They went about living in uh, tents and destitute, destitute and persecuted and mistreated. Um, they refused to be released that they might retain, uh, gain an even better resurrection. They faced jeers and, and flogging. Now, 
to me, this tells me that it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. If you want your martyr's crown, and if you want to attain to a greater resurrection, it's not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. And that's why all these people have this fake false, false faith. They say, Jesus paid it all. Jesus did everything. Jesus did everything. I do nothing for you. You do everything for me. I do nothing for you. God doesn't speak today. And if God does speak today, we only obey him in what we want to do. And if he ever tells us anything we want, don't want to do, we say, God's grace, we're still saved by faith. We're still, we can disobey God. But didn't I just, what's the verse? first verse? Those who receive... Uh, Jesus became a source of eternal salvation for those who obey Him. Those who obey, you have to obey God. And then when you obey God, you're going to go through suffering. You're going to learn obedience by what you suffer. And the Bible says, he who suffers in the flesh is done with sin. Many times if you get into sin, you're going to also find yourself suffering in the flesh. And then turning away from sin and then bringing a relief from that suffering. Anyway, the Lord's just wanting me to let people know that when you go through hardships and trials, that is by faith. When you break your alabaster bottle at the feet of Jesus and you give offerings and obey God, that is by faith. These people who say you don't got to do nothing and that's what faith is, is doing nothing and just saying Jesus did it all, that's the opposite of faith. They're going to get nothing from God. They do nothing for God and they're going to get nothing from God. If they teach that God doesn't speak today, you're going to end up where in a place where God doesn't speak. What, whoever you follow, and, and it's a reflection of their relationship with God. For, for a guy like Greg Jackson or Tim Henderson, they don't do anything for God. Chelsea Bedell, I remember seeing her teach on, on, her fa on fasting. She skipped one meal one time in her life. And then she got a word. She got a prophetic word, and it was a single word. It was something like restoration. And that was all she got. You know why she had an incomplete word? Because her fasting was incomplete and her whole life is incomplete and her whole walk with God is incomplete. And if you follow her, you're going to have, you're going to just, anytime the Lord tells you to do something, you're going to say that's dead works and you're going to live an incomplete life. And when you stand before God, you're going to have nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. If you follow Greg Jackson or Tim Henderson, or Creflo Dollar, you're going to have all your money and wealth and riches in this world. Think about it. If you follow the teachings of Creflo Dollar and uh, Kenneth Copeland, you might be very wealthy in this world. But that's not real faith. Real faith is attaining to a greater resurrection like Paul. Paul appealed to Caesar. Why? And he stayed in jail. And they said, Paul, if you withdraw your, your appeal to Caesar, you can go free right now. He said, no, it's God's will for me to testify. Many people would tell him that's just dead works and he didn't have enough faith to become a multimillionaire in this world. It's the opposite. These people teach the opposite of salvation. And they're going to find out when it's not a pre-tribulation rapture and persecution comes and Jesus himself literally will not return until they fall away. In other words, they're going to go through suffering and suffering until they finally fall away from the faith. Then the bridegroom will come because he doesn't actually like them. He doesn't like their teaching. A long time ago, they let go. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2, it says, By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain well they're no longer holding to the truth they're no longer holding to that word that was preached when that word was preached the alabaster bottle they're going to tell you oh that's just dead works and they're going to tell you obedience is just dead works but it's not it's not dead works persecution is coming and they are all going to fall away i had a vision of greg jackson taking the mark of the beast and cursing god i had a vision of chelsea bedell with sores all over her body um, and Revelation chapter 16 verse 2 where it says painful and ugly sores broke out on the people with the mark of the beast so she has taken the mark of the beast um, I saw a vision of Tim Henderson being a joke like like I saw a vision of him standing before God for his day of judgment and all the apostles, everybody around just laughing and falling on the floor rolling when he talks about how he should go to heaven and then they show him his teaching and they show him what he did while he lived in the earth and his lack of actual faith 
and his teaching on what faith really is is the opposite of true faith and right then like all the angels of God and all the apostles and all the disciples everybody who made it to heaven they all fall out rolling around laughing I'm just saying you don't want to be that let alone the people who teach that God doesn't speak today they're gonna stand before God and on their day of judgment and God's not gonna say nothing to them I'm just saying <laughs>